Let's all stand as we sing and dance as our worship to God. Every star you know by name with one breath all life begins from the beginning, beginning, beginning until the end, the end, the end. You're the one foundation. You shaped me inside and out. You made me to be all about, about you. What can I do without you? you, 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 you. So tell me who I am. You say I'm yours, and you love me most. Nothing I want more to live for your purpose. Cause you are my God, and you love me most. Nothing I Another way we can worship God is through our giving. So you may give your tithes and offering as you check the instructions on your screen. Let's all pray. Dear Abba Father, thank you once again for this beautiful day. Thank you for you have created us for a purpose and that is to love you and to love others. May we learn to do that every single day. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Hi kids and welcome to Kids Church. My name is Teacher Maylene. I want to make a shout out to Milan, Rain, um, Ronnie, Anna, Sweetie from Iloilo, also Baste Pelagio. Hello. No, hello, Tara. Welcome back. I missed you. What have you been up to? I've been going through my online classes, Teacher Maylene. Learning is so much fun. <gasps> oh, what have you learned so far? I learned that there are people who can use both their left and right hands equally. <gasps> they are called ambidextrous. <gasps> wow. I'm sure you know your left from your right hand. Hmm. How about you kids? Do you know your left from your right? Can you raise your right hand? Great job! How about your left hand? Oh! Awesome! Now, let's play a game since you know your right from your left. The instructions are, I will give you a command to touch a part of your face and you must do what I say, not what I do. Okay? Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Yes, let's do this. So raise your right hand. Right hand? Mm -hmm. And touch your nose. Nose. <gasps> Did uh, you touch your uh, nose? Is that your nose? Is that your nose? I think so. <laughs> Are you touching your nose? Okay, let's do this one more time. Raise your left hand and touch your ear. Oh, oh did ear. you touch your ear? ear? Did you touch your ear? I'm oh. having a hard time touching my ear, teacher Maylene. Are you touching your ear? Not your chin, okay? Okay, let's do this one more time. Raise your Right hand. Right hand. And touch your 
Eyebrow. Eyebrow. <laughs> I'm touching my skin. Are you touching there eyebrow? No. No, there, 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 there. There you go. <laughs> Great <laughs> job. That was fun. You sure know your right from your left. Wow. Our lesson for today is about two of Jesus' disciples who wanted to sit at his left hand and right hand. Ooh. To sit at the left hand and right hand meant to have a special place of honor and power, right? <gasps> Something like that. So let's watch this video and listen to the word to know more. Yay! Yay! If we take a look at the world around us or ask ourselves and reflect deep inside, we all want to be great. But what does it mean to be great? Back in the ancient world, at the time before Christ was born, a great empire, namely the Roman Empire, rose to power and fame and became the leading force in the Mediterranean region. Huh, by Mediterranean region, you mean the crossroads of three continents, right? Europe, Africa, and Asia. That's, that's humongous, that's huge. Yes, the Roman Empire held a large territory because they were strong and powerful. They had very skilled and strong Roman army, and that's how they conquered and expanded their territory over time. Even Judea, the homeland of the Jews, became one of the provinces of the Roman Empire. Back in their day, people and authority imposed their power upon people who were under them. This led them to treat them poorly. The Jewish people were not spared from the harsh reality that made them hope for a change. Ah, oh, you know, that doesn't sound unique only to their time. I think people who think only of themselves end up being inconsiderate of serving others' needs even today. You can say that. That's part of our fallen human nature. But Jesus shows us a better way. At one time, during Jesus' ministry, he talked to his disciples about his coming death and resurrection. But James and John, two of his disciples, seemed to be keen about something else. In Mark chapter 10, verse 37, they made a particular request to Jesus. When you sit in your glorious throne, we want to sit in places of honor next to you. One on your right and the other on your left. Wait a minute, wanting to sit next to Jesus, that doesn't sound bad at all. Well, back in the day, loyal friends and followers who stuck with the future ruler through bad times often earned a right for a request, a, a favor of sorts. So to ask for seats beside the ruler was equal to asking for the highest and greatest position in the kingdom. Other disciples got angry hearing the request and, and, and it brought disunity among them. So Jesus calls them together and tells them the unexpected. You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so amongst you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be the slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Wow, that's it. The disciples were looking at the way of the world to define what it means to be great. But they were mistaken to look at the wrong example, the rulers of the world instead of following after Jesus' steps, who, in all his power, authority, and divinity, he came down on earth to serve and gave his life to save the world. You got the point. God looks at greatness differently. In the eyes of God, those who put themselves last to serve others are the first, the greatest in his eyes. You're right. Things really are different in God's kingdom. Wow. Why, why don't we take a better look at what the Word of God teaches us 
about a heart that loves to serve others. Hi everyone, Pastor Bojo here, and I'm so excited to share with you the Word of God. Uh, now, before I get into the story that I want to share with you today, uh, how many of you have ever thought about things that you wanted? Uh, but when you ask this from maybe your parents or other people, you know, you didn't really think so much about it. What do I mean? Uh, how many of you uh, ever thought about uh, wanting a pet shark? Yeah, anyone? Anyone having a pet shark? Yeah? Um, and a pet shark sounds great, but if you think about it, you know, sharks really aren't made to be living in homes and little aquariums, right? They're meant to roam the wild open seas and oceans, right? Uh, yeah, or, or maybe some of you, how many of you probably asked your parents, I want a room full of candy and chocolate and marshmallows and all of these things. Yeah, is that you? Man, I, I wish, I think I, I thought about that one time, but come to think of it, if that was me, if I had a room full of candy, I'd probably eat this candy and that candy and after a while I'd be, I don't want any more candy. I'm full of candy. I, I'm tired of eating candy, you know? And all of these other candy would just go to waste, you know? Not really thinking about it. Or, um, how many of you have ever thought about going to Antarctica? You know, my two kids, uh, when they're learning about the continents, uh, they said that they wanted to go to Antarctica because it's cold and it's nice and all these things. And when they were th saying that, I was thinking, hmm, I'm not really sure you want to go there. You know, there's a reason why people don't really live there because it's cold all day, every day. You know, it's freezing cold. And, you know, maybe some of us, we've asked things of our parents but we didn't really think about it. We didn't really sit down and reflect, should I, do I really want this? And two of Jesus' disciples in today's story asked something of Jesus that they didn't really think about. You see, James and John, these two brothers who were disciples of Jesus, came up to Jesus and said, Jesus, can you do us a favor? You know, they were like, James, yeah, let's go to Jesus. Let's ask him right now. And so Jesus, okay, sure, what is that? What do you want me to do for you? And James and, John said, James and John said, Jesus, when you come into your glory, we want you to put us right beside you, one of us on your left and one of us on your right. And when Jesus heard this, he was like, mm, James and John, I'm not really sure you know what you're asking of me. I don't think you really understand what you're saying. You see, Jesus knew that eventually he is going to be rejected by the people and he's going to be crucified on the cross. And James and John probably, and maybe the other disciples were probably thinking, you know, as they were following Jesus all of this time, you know, there's a big crowd that were following him. There were miracles left and right. People were, were following him, listening to his teachings, listening to his preachings. And they were probably thinking, Man, this Jesus is something else. He is somebody else. He is a special guy. He's probably going to be some mighty leader, some mighty king who is going to defeat all the other kings from all the other nations. And, uh, you know, he's going to be some one powerful, awesome leader. And they were probably thinking, James and John were probably thinking, we better ask Jesus to get the best positions of power and authority as early as now, don't you think? Okay. And so when they asked of Jesus, the other disciples heard it. And how do you think they felt? They were pretty upset. They were pretty angry at James and John. And they were like, what, what's going on? You know, they were talking among themselves and they were, you know, they're arguing, arguing with James and John. And, you know, Jesus saw this and he was like, okay, okay, guys, 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 come on. Listen up. Gather around here. I have something to tell you guys. You know, and he was telling, telling them, you know, all the other foreign nations, they have these kings, they have these leaders of who with power and authority, 
and they use it to rule over the people and then tell them to do this and to do that to you know go fetch my slippers you know go grab me a glass of water and you know they would boss all these people around because of their position because of their power because of their authority and Jesus was teaching them something totally different he was saying if you want to be the first if you want to be great if you want to be a leader you must first be a servant what does that mean you must be willing to serve you must be willing to put others above you before you before ourselves okay you need to be willing to do this without complaining without grumbling if somebody tells you to do something why don't you uh, fix the bed of your brother okay I'll do it that's not really serving okay you're yes you are doing it but you're doing it grumbling and complaining and unwillingly okay we need to learn as Jesus is teaching disciples to put others before ourselves and this lesson that Jesus was teaching his disciples is not just for them but for us today we need to be willing to learn how to serve those around us and let me encourage you even though you're still young I want you to develop that heart to serve, that willingness to serve, even without anyone telling you. Look around the house. What is something that you can do to serve your parents, to serve your brother, to serve your sister, to serve maybe even your grandparents if they're living with you, to serve the people around you? Maybe that's to fix the bed, not just your bed, but the bed of somebody else. Maybe it's to help your parents with uh, preparing lunch, breakfast, dinner, uh, maybe to help them water the plants uh, if they forget maybe um, and it's doing all of these things without expecting anything in return you hear that it's serving those and putting them before you you know as you grow in this heart to serve others and to put others before you you know one day you will become an awesome and great leader who will do great extraordinary awesome things for God's glory and I'm excited for that day when you will be used by God and as a great and mighty leader for his purpose and for his kingdom you see the reason that how we can serve other people can be found in our power truth which is God's love for me God's love for you makes us love serving others it's not because of us that we can serve others but it's because of God's love for you and for me our power verse in Hebrews 6 10 says God is always fair he will remember how you help his people in the past and how you are still helping them you belong to God and he won't forget the love you have shown his people why don't we dance to our power verse today Jesus is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He's the leader of leaders. 
Yet Jesus humbled himself by coming here on earth, not to be another king here on earth who would uh, conquer this land and defeat these people. No, he came here on earth to be a servant, to be a servant of all. And he did it by humbling himself unto death on the cross. He did that to save you and me. He did that so that we could be reconciled, that so that we can have a right relationship with God the Father. Amen? God is good. And He loves us so much that He sent His Son for you and for me. Why don't we pray? Lord, we thank You, Father God, for the example of Christ. We thank You that even the teachings uh, that He shared with the disciples are even teachings that we can apply in our own lives today. So Lord, I pray for these young men and women who are hearing the teaching of your word, I pray that they would be mighty, awesome leaders. Leaders uh, who would live for your glory, who would live for your purpose by serving, serving the people around them, serving them out of love, serving out of the love that you have poured out into their lives. Lord, I'm excited to see each one of these young men and women fulfill the great destiny and purpose that you have for them. So Lord, I thank you. Bless them right now. Bless them right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hi kids and welcome back to Craft Time with Teacher Plum. That's me. Before we start, I just want to say happy birthday to Chloe Alessa Torres, Lily Valia from Vietnam, Martin Abisamis, and also hello to your sister, Micaela, and also happy birthday to Caleb Gavin Mendoza and Bea Rab Sumangil from JIL Toronto. Happy birthday, kids! I also want to say hello to Haley C. Haley, I hope you're watching. Also, hello to Sky Litorha and Kaylee Kamba. Welcome! Our craft for today is super duper easy. But before we begin, let's see the crafts that you guys submitted from our lesson last week. It is the things. As I remember last week, we made beautiful artworks of our power truth. I will love what God loves and I will hate what God hates. You guys did such an amazing job recycling kids more than making this artwork. I hope that you'll always remember to love what God loves because we love God. That means letting go of some things that God does not like in our lives. This can be the movies that we watch, the games that we play, the videos that we stream on YouTube, or anything that doesn't make God happy. in the service, we learned about having hearts of service. So how do you make a heart? 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 Any kind of heart, just as long as it's a heart of service. And since we're still in quarantine, we should start having a heart of service at home. Which is why our craft for today is gonna be heart tokens. To make the heart tokens, we will need recycled cardboard. This is an old folder that I used back in the day. And I also have some coloring materials here. I have oil pastels, but you can use anything available at your house. We'll also need some scissors, a marker, or you can use a pen too, and some stickers if you have stickers, but if you don't, that's fine. The first step is to cut hearts or paper hearts out of thick paper such as this folder, but you can use recycled material like the ones we used last week and cut one heart for every person in your house today. 
I just cut out a template from recycled cardboard by folding it in half and then just cutting the heart. And then I'm just gonna trace them on one by one on my folder. And now that I have traced the hearts on my folder, I'm gonna cut like this. And be careful with your scissors. And now that I'm done cutting the heart tokens, on one side, we are gonna write heart tokens of service. So I have written heart tokens of service on both heart tokens. And now I'm just gonna flip them over. And now it's time to write on the other side that is blank. And for this, I'm just gonna use a regular pen. And then I am gonna write the names of my family on my heart tokens. I will serve you with all my heart by blank. And mine is cooking lunch. So it says, I will serve you with all my heart by cooking lunch, love plum. And this heart token for my brother-in-law, Janine's husband, Roy, I will serve you with all my heart by blank, taking nice photos of Ben. And Ben is their newborn son. And it says, love plum. But the fun part is you can color it. So I'm taking my oil pastels and with the red, I'm just gonna color my heart token. So I decided to decorate both heart tokens with stickers that I have and color them purple and red. And I'm now done with my craft. Again, it says heart tokens of service on one side and on the other side, it says, I will serve you with all my heart by blank. And in the blank, you can put anything that you would want to do for that person or that family member. Remember to put their names and sign your name. Now, these tokens will just be decorations if I don't give them to my brother and to my sister. I hope that these heart tokens will not just be decorations in your house. I hope that you actually give them to your family members and you do whatever you wrote here in these heart tokens. This is a great opportunity to show your love for God by serving others. And as you serve others, you will be molded into a great leader, a servant leader like Jesus Christ. So we're now done with our craft. It was an easy, easy craft. I'm excited to see your versions of this craft. If you want your photos featured in our next videos, kindly send them to the email address flashed on the screen. Remember, the deadline of photo submission is always Monday, Philippine Standard Time. And please send them in portrait mode and not in any form of collage. Also, I would love to hear stories of you serving your family members when you send in your craft pictures. I'm excited to be encouraged by your testimonies. And that's it for Craft Time with Teacher Plum. See you next week. Bye! Oh, I love the heart tokens! I will make one for my friend wow. so I can serve her by cooking dinner for her. Ooh, dinner. Yes, dinner. Yummy dinner. Yep. But for now, let's play the Starino. Wow, the Starino. Do, do you really know? Do I know? Yes, oh, okay. I know. Okay, I'm, I'm sure you do. Let's find out. <laughs> so, kids, are you ready? Amazing. Yes. Let's start. Let's start. Okay. Here we go. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, question number one. Who were the disciples who asked Jesus for a favor? Uh, 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 hmm. I got this. Yes, uh, I know you do. Come it's on. both letter J. Yes, it's, yes, it's yes. James and John. Yes, perfect. Yay. Great job, Taro. Question number two. What favor did they ask? Oh, I read hmm. this in the Bible. Yes, it's uh, there. As I remember, 
They said that one of them will sit at Jesus' right hand and the other on his left hand. Yes, that's correct again. Yay. Great Woo-hoo. job. Question number three. Three. What did sitting in Jesus' right hand and left hand mean? Ooh. Ah, I remember that they would share some of Jesus' power and authority. Yes, correct again! Yay. We're on to our final question. Final question. Final question. Here it goes. What did Jesus say a person must do in order to be great? Ah, this is the best one. Mm-hmm. I remember the answer. Okay, let's hear it. Jesus said that a person must be a servant and serve others. <laughs> yes, amazing! Yeah. That's perfect! Great job, Taro! Thank you! Great job, kids! Yes! Now, we have a question for you kids. Yes, and you can answer this with your parents or your guardians. Yep. Here it goes. In order to develop this heart of service, what is one thing you will start doing this week in order to serve your family? Mm. Mm, what could that be? And that's it for Kids Church for today! Yep. See you next week! Bye kids! Bye! Bye. God bless you! See you! Bye! Bye! God bless!